In this episode of Marina Queen, I install the rebuilt water pump and Jimmy with a jerry can. I also take you on a trip inside the electrical panel where I discover a broken voltage sensing wire connecting the battery monitor to the shunt. My name is Rick. Join me as I refit Sailing Vessel Frog's Leap with an eye towards taking her to warmer places. I get to spend only a few days each month on the boat. That's why I call the channel Marina Queen. Look at this. So if I, underneath the engine, I must have, when the raw water pump, when I took it out, when before I left, I must have just left the salt, the seawater that drained in there. This is all from the evaporated seawater. That's how much salt. I mean, and that was not a lot of seawater. That's insane. Do this now. There she is, a rebuilt pump. I think we're gonna start her up and let her run for a while. Well, of course it's true what they say. Sailboats are the RV of the seas. People put lots of stuff on them. They're really slow. Comparatively speaking, they don't have very big fuel tanks. Mine in particular, it has a 19 gallon fuel tank and I burn about three quarters of a gallon an hour. Really any sailboat doing any kind of passage. They've got jerry cans strapped to their lifelines. I'm gonna need jerry cans too if I'm gonna do any kind of passage. I have one five gallon jerry can on board and it just so happens that my tank is about half full right now so i could load this five gallon diesel jerry can into my tank right there's a little white strainer that's fitted in we're going to try to remove this strainer moving around a lot these things become huge pitas so that's the last thing I want is a pita we're gonna siphon fuel from that jerry can into that fuel inlet well you can see just how hard this would be if you had to like pour this down here you'd need a big old funnel you'd spill all over the place you have to use one of these shaker siphons. So it was really windy last night and my plan was this morning to top off the fuel tank with the jerry can as i did and then to go sailing but the small craft advisory that was in place for the bay last night due to the wind is still in place and that wind is supposed to be kicking up in the next hour or two we're back looking at the electrical panel xantrex link light monitor the idea is you could have a couple of batteries on here so you have like a main and an auxiliary battery you can get the voltage on the auxiliary that's all you can do on the auxiliary on the main you can get the voltage you can get what your current draw is and then here you can get battery percentage it's not working right and i'll show you why if you look at the back of it there's some wires that attach to this green piece here this black wire isn't connected to anything. This is the battery compartment for Frog's Leap. Got two batteries here. So the positives go off to the switch. And then this one is the return from the switch that heads down to the starter. The thing I wanted to point out is this thing up here. This is called a shunt. And the return current comes to the battery. Everything goes through this point. So the shunt is a bus bar with two terminals on it and a conductor in between the two. And the properties of that conductor drive the naming convention of the shunt. My shunt is described as 500 amp, 50 millivolt. And shunts are described by the amount of voltage drop that occurs at a certain current. So in my case, 
50 millivolt voltage drop at 500 amps. What I think is so funny about that is, you know, you're at 500 amps and 50 millivolts. So you've got your current and you've got your voltage, so you can use Ohm's law to solve for resistance. You don't have to use two numbers. You could just use the Ohm value. Rather than calling it a 550, why don't we just call it a 0 0.1 milliohm shunt? This is the green wire coming off the shunt, and it's connected still. But look at this. This is the black wire coming off the shunt. It's loose. So the shunt is right here. And the shunt is the last thing these returning electrons are going to go through before going to the battery. And the reason is, is because this shunt's whole purpose is to be part of this ammeter, this current meter over here. And I'll explain that and how it works in a minute. This wire that returns to the battery on Frog's Leap, it's very thick and it's short, it's only eight inches. So it's intended to be the very last thing that those electrons see before getting back to the battery. The meter has voltage sensing wires that also connect to either of these posts. This is the negative post, this is the positive post. And on Frog's Leap, what we saw was the green one looked okay, but the black one was clearly cut and it was also cut at the meter. So I have a bunch of 12, is this 12 gauge? No, 18 gauge. Well, you can really hear the wind kicking up. This is the reason why I didn't go out this morning. It was predicted to start around two, and if I got out, I would have got out by 10. Maybe it would have been worth going, but you know what, this thing's gonna pass, so I'd rather be out on lighter days, like tomorrow or Thursday. And then we'll run the wire all the way in there. <clears throat> and I may not have the little screwdriver that connects it. I have some at home, I'd just as soon bring them. So I may just wait to complete the job which is just fine anyway because the, the job was supposed to be the mast headlight. Yeah, I'm gonna keep pursuing that mast headlight this whole trip. <laughs> see how far I can get. But see, this is what happens. Other things come up, but that's okay, right? The whole point is that you have something to do. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is prepare one end of this. Then we'll go into the engine compartment and just connect this whole wire to it and we'll run it. The Xantrex. Pink light. Pink light. Pink light. There we go. And we'll find a fitting, an appropriate fitting. See, they say on them. So this is blue is 16 to 14. I think it's gonna be red. Oh yeah. So red is 22 to 18. So this is perfect. Pink is what we want. It is a 22 to 18, and this is an 18 gauge wire that I'm using for this sensor. So I'll go in like that and I'll just clamp it down. Oh, I love these guys, these ratcheting guys. You know it, man. These things are the bomb. So there we go. We get the right amount of pressure every time. Pull test, good. So, I'm gonna go ahead and strip the other one. Then we're gonna bring the heat, bring the heat, then we're gonna bring the heat gun down. Then we're gonna bring the heat, bring the heat, then we're gonna bring the heat gun down and uh, seal this. And then we're gonna run it back to the, back to the dealio.
Well, the reason why they don't call these shunts 0.1 milliohm shunts and choose to call them as they do 500 amp, 50 millivolt, is because that establishes and anchors a ratio. So once I get these wires rerouted and get them connected into the Xantrex, the Xantrex will be able to see the voltage on either side of the shunt. And so it'll have a real-time view of the voltage drop and the computer inside the meter. It can extrapolate what the actual current is right now based on the voltage drop it sees. 1.21 gigawatts! This power wire came out as well while I was working on it. And also we've got this black one. That one goes here. Just ran that one. So next visit when I get these little screwdrivers, we'll get this Xantrax working again. Thanks for watching this episode of Marina Queen. If you liked this episode, press that like button. And if you want to see more, well, you got to subscribe. Oh yeah, I'll see you next week on the boat. Mm -hmm. New episode every Sunday. I'm not as think as you confused I am.